us speak positively over ourselves and also power. So I believe in the slogan that the Black Panther Party made up, which is called All Power to the People. So if I can get a fist in the air and honor Brother Malcolm X, All Power to the People. Y'all, y'all was louder than that at the concert. All power to the people. about your movie, why I made a curator's pick of the Hollywood French film. Community, unity, 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 Together. I'm not chiding other organizations. I'm just saying, show me what you've been doing. The fifth annual Kemet in the Desert series, five years strong and bringing these events to the community for Black Weekend. And we'll continue to do it, because Coming in the Desert series is ongoing. And Malcolm X is part of that. May 19th at the West Las Vegas Library Theater and the West Las Vegas Art Center, a full day of Malcolm. And I saved the best for last, because there was a class I always wanted to take that I was never ever able to get into. And that was Dr. Leonard Jeffrey's class on Malcolm X. Now, we were trying to put some things together, and when I had the opportunity to dialogue with Baba, and Baba is a term of endearment and respect because these gentlemen are master teachers. They're in school chiefs in Africa. I'm just going to leave it at that. But Baba said he would come out here and talk to us for Malcolm X. He's 83 years old. And that's Baba. Thank you so much. If you go on YouTube, you can see some of the stuff Leonard Jeffries has put out. Dr. Leonard Jeffries. He said he'd be willing to come out and give us a class. Because he's 83 years old and he enjoys Las Vegas and he loves hanging out with my with your man, Franklin G. So he's going to come out, he's going to lecture us Saturday, May 19th. I could never get into his class because it was always filled. This is Like It Is Radio, Black Intelligent Talk Radio. One is the Old Testament and one is the New Testament. Don't act like you all ain't been in church. Hey. Your mama and aunt have been dragging you to church every Sunday that they could get you to church. And if they could really get you going, they got you going on Wednesday for Bible session. I mean, you got a hey, choir rehearsal. <laughs> Our life has been built around church because we're spiritual people. But we got to go deep into what church is. Church is more than words off the page, printed page. The Bible is more than what is in the text. And besides, I want to know what damn Bible you're referring to. <laughs> you know, we're here in one of my favorite, favorite places in Vegas, the MLK statue. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a little, a little choked up. From yesterday, you know, we were celebrating Malcolm X's birthday. That was May 19th, out here in Las Vegas. Malcolm X 2018. What a day. What a day. We took over the entire library complex system. We'll say it like that. We started in the morning in the amphitheater, which is with the West Las Vegas Art Center, and the West Las Vegas Library Theater Complex Meet. And, uh, well, Malcolm X Day 2018 or something. In the Native American culture, we start every day with a prayer. We welcome the rising sun. We thank the Creator for all He brings us, good and bad, because that's what makes us strong to fight our enemies. And our greatest enemy is ourself. Most of us are self-destructive until we learn to become a human being. And so, because we believe you're not born a human, we believe you have to earn the right to be a human. And to earn that right, you have to accept the motto of, I cause no harm to self, no harm to family, no harm to tribe. Uh, it was actually started by a group of people you probably see during the course of the day. You saw some them in the performance, and yesterday, unfortunately, Just Flo, who was part of the original cast of individuals that did the first Malcolm X Day event that I'm familiar with, out here in 2016, uh, she was supposed to be our MC. But you know, life and everything just catches up to you. She's one of the hardest working working women in Vegas, and there's no questions about that. I will arm wrestle you on that one. She seriously is plain old dope sauce. And because of her, my brother's memory will never die. Because of her, my brother's memory will never die. Please put your hands together for my sister, Jessica Flo Washington.
yeah, you need to come up here. You need to come up here because yesterday, Franklin G. Burley of Like It Is Radio and The Breakdown wanted to present you with a proclamation from the city. But because, again, you were putting somebody else's needs before your own, you were unable to receive it. So with that being said, please put your hands together for my sister. You may stand up and honor her. Please let her smell her flowers while she can. So, real quick, so that we know. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Franklin. What What is the actual date on it? The actual date? It was uh, Friday. We didn't want to do Friday. Friday. It's officially Miss Jessica Washington, a.k.a. Jess Flo Day. Long time coming. Long time coming. To all of you all that say you ain't from this city. Myself, Jess Flo, and Calvin, the professor, a very good friend of mine's, um, we used to, we would sit down and we would discuss about, discuss Malcolm X. We would talk about him, like, well, we had in common that he was our favorite. But it was also the fact that he didn't have a day where he was celebrated. And so we wanted to, we wanted to eventually put on an event. The next year, Calvin was, was killed in a car accident by a drunk driver. And so Jess and I kind of came together and decided, let's go ahead and let's try to get this thing started. 2018, we brought it back big with the help of the Las Vegas Library District, the help of the, Las, the city of Las Vegas. And as I said, we were trying to do some things in So pick. <laughs> Just one. Pick it up. Uh, Trina? Oh, Trina Giles, old grits. Oh, there you go. She won it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's her last name, name. Giles, right? Yeah. Trina, yeah. It says Trina, right? Yeah, that's what it says. Oh, I guess. Read the number. Read the number. Anybody want to check the number? <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to be here. Uh, no, yeah, that's why I took the number. Yeah, right? yeah, that's why we got the number. Okay, so. Because I just want to make sure. Trina Giles. Trina Giles is this. Bridge one. So we'll get the port live portrait from Mr. Brian Philpott to you. Appreciate your suit. You came out during the day, you saw it. And this is what we do Malcolm X Day 2018. But we used to go out and see these guys speaking on 7th Avenue. There used to be a bookstore on 125th Street called the UCLA. The university on the corner of Lenox Avenue. And I mean, it was a big book, so before Barnes and Noble, me and my brother used to run out, even in the, we used to go to the Schomburg. But I thought these gentlemen who were speaking were giants, because I was a kid. They were standing on soapboxes, and that's where the term soapbox preacher comes from, in case you didn't know. They would just throw their little soapbox down and get busy. And this guy, I don't think I remember the most, is the man who sold peanuts. He had that little pssst. And I could always get some peanuts, and hear these guys who I knew, now I know they were giants. But that the opportunity of knowing Malcolm and living in Harlem and understanding some of the words that he was expressing and how the people felt and how I got it led me to believe more so much in the revolution of the struggle of the people. Because even if you look at Malcolm's life, and most, most of us will admit, there were transformations. If you're a young man in Harlem, there are transformations. If you're a young man in Compton, there are transformations. If you're a young man in Las Vegas, and I don't mean to exclude women, there are transformations, things you will go through that will either make you or break you or give you another opportunity, good, bad, or indifferent, your soul will rise through those things. That's why Malcolm was a good ladies' man, so to speak. That's why Malcolm was a good runner of numbers, so to speak, because his spirit was in him. These were all transformations. You don't just start out selling numbers. You don't just start out selling drugs. You don't just start out dealing with women. You don't just start out going to jail. And when you're in jail, you can, again, as you know, Malcolm made a transformation. And the last couple of transformations I'll get off this mic that we're representing today is his transformation to Malik El Shabazz. El Haj Malik El Shabazz, if you're correct. Because again, like me, I'm kind of fiery sometimes on the radio. <clears throat> but I, as I say, anybody who's willing to work with me, work with me. Let's move forward beyond what I said in the past. Let's work forward. And that's what Malcolm was coming to. And that's unfortunate when he was taken from us. So as we look at that, just look at the transformations in your life. And that's what it's all about, the continuing of transformations. To Franklin G, the breakdown, AK Just Flow, all those who made this possible, thank you all for doing this. It, like AK said, ever since the one they held on in 2016, the ball's been rolling. To Magic and those who are working with the events tomorrow, thank you for that. Like AK said, it's not a competition thing. It may be two, a two-part you know, event thing, but it's one person we honor, and we're one community that's doing it together. So we're not gonna let Anything to buy us. All right. Brother Malcolm stood for unity. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm yeah. and so we're not going to take on the other man, but we're bigger and fighting amongst each other. 
And it did touch on it. She said, in the beginning, I was younger. I was, I've been on here since I was 19 or 23 now. So, of course, you know, as a child, you think as a child. I got older, my mind grew, but we didn't really see how to act. But the, what's important is that, <laughs> but, as in, what's important is that we're on one accord now. That's what matters. And we're not going to let anybody ever divide us. Because while we're sitting there building, the true enemy is plotting. Do you understand? And I'm not going to be for you long, but I want you all to simply know, as we honor Malcolm X, and may God bless him and also bless the Professor, we have to stand on what Malcolm X stood on. Get out of the way because we're here for Malcolm X Day. We're going to have the pleasure of hearing from one of the master teachers, Dr. Leonard Jeffries. If you don't know, you're about to learn. So prepare yourself. He's going to enlighten us and engage us with dialogue that very rarely makes it out to these Las Vegas sands. Uh, one of the pleasures of living and being a Harlemite, I was able to be exposed to him at a young age. And the beautiful thing about being a Harlemite is I was exposed to Malcolm X. You get it through osmosis. I, I may not have recognized all of the implications of what his life meant and the things he did, but I saw his witness in life by coming out, by walking down the block in my grandmother's house on that fateful day and seeing so many Negroes lined up to go see somebody who was dead. Who was dead. And I will tell you, my own family being West Indians and Pan-Africanists, we were cognizant of his, his efforts. And I was made of them, those efforts aware by his life living in Harlem. said, too loud and so damn proud. Say that bit, black. Say your bit. Yeah, he says his bit. And then bit by bit, his knowledge is kicked. So there he stands, well-dressed and verbally blessed. And he's saying his bit. And everyone's impressed. It's said so well that doubts become dispelled and listeners become satisfied. So you should place the headstone there where our revolution died. I just wanted to say my piece. Uh, I wanted to, since there is, it's, a, it's Malcolm X Day, what other way uh, would be better to honor him by recommending some books to people if they have not read any? Um, any books about Malcolm X? Uh, the first one to start off with uh, is The Autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley. Uh, I would encourage everyone to read it because he actually interviewed Malcolm X and you actually get to go through the four different stages as um, Brother Franklin was talking about that Malcolm X went through, which was Malcolm Little, uh, you know, from his childhood up into his adolescent years. Then he uh, transferred, he, he went through another, another metamorphosis, which uh, led him to be uh, Detroit Red, and then after Detroit Red, he became Malcolm X, and then after Malcolm X, he had became El Hajj Malik Shabazz. Number one, Malcolm. It's good Alex Haley was in the mix with Malcolm, because he did not have enough African consciousness or the personal strength to write Malcolm's story. He could take it from Malcolm and put it on paper. And that's what he did. Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben resented him doing that, meaning Alex Haley, because they wanted to write Malcolm's story. And they were not capable of writing Malcolm's story. What they would have been would have been Dr. Ben's story about Malcolm through Dr. Ben's ideas, Dr. Clark's story about Malcolm through Dr. Clark's ideas. That's right. And so uh, they presented Alex, but Malcolm was blessed and he was a genius. He, because Alex had done the, the Playboy um, articles, he felt he was legitimate enough to handle the autobiography. And it would be Malcolm's autobiography and not seen through the eyes of anybody else. And so that's why we have to go deep. I say go deep. Don't just study Malcolm. Study all the shit that Malcolm had to go through as a red, what do you call him, Detroit red, and everything else, and went through the hell that he went through. And how did he come out? How did he go into jail? His sister Ella, Brother Small knows these things better than me. She, he, she may have made the call 
for him to get into jail because he couldn't give up white women. He couldn't give up the mess that he was in. She may have made the call, and that saved his life. That saved us to have this brother victorious coming through the hell that he went through. So since we know how deep it is in our culture and it's still there, and Cosby lets us know that it is real, you can have billions of dollars, you can have the most beautiful wife, you can have a career that's extraordinary, but that, I call it the white pussy syndrome. Well, here we are now, and we learned a lot in that time. You see all the food, so you know where we are at Grits Cafe. Hi, it's your man Franklin G. Student Verley. We are finally concluding the Malcolm X Day presentation of this lovely portrait. We're here at Grits Cafe with the recipient, the winner. We saw the raffle. Lordland Films captured it all right outside the library, so we are finally caught catch up with the owner, proprietor, executive, all you CEO, everything you want to know, running Grits Cafe right here in the community, right down the block. And we have the owner of the restaurant and retired firefighter extraordinaire, the first of her kind here in Las Vegas. So we are pleased to let you know, Ms. Trina Giles, how are you? I'm good, thank you, thank you for coming in. Oh, well, no, we had to, we had to, we had to track everybody down and get everybody together again. And again, Malcolm X Day 2018, we had this portrait by Mr. Brian Philpott of our own Malcolm X, and we are here in her establishment. How long have you been here and running this business? Actually, my business has been open for 10 years, a little bit over 10 and a half years, but I'm a native of Las Vegas. Well, we know that you're more than just a native, a native extraordinaire. As I said, she was the original, if you will, African-American female on the firefighting force here in Las Vegas and rose to the rank of? Investigator, fire investigator. I wanted y'all to hear that because that's not a fabrication on my part. Fire investigator. She's running this business. We love this place. You can come here anytime you want. This is part of what we do here in Vegas, KCEP. We are here to give her this portrait. We're going to let her get back to her business because she came in. And I'm going to hold it up. And Ms. Giles... You won Malcolm X. And as you see this portrait right here by Mr. Brian Philpott, this is what was raffled off at the Malcolm X Day 2018 event here in Las Vegas, captured on film by Lord Land Films. You can check it out on YouTube if you're watching us. If you're in town, you got to come see Miss Gritz. Can I call you Miss Gritz? Yes. All right, Miss Trina Giles is the winner. And I want everybody to see we handed, we, we, we got to videotape these because we're in Vegas. Yes. And we did hand over the ticket. We saw her name on it, her phone number. We got that captured. And now here we have... Malcolm X, Malik El Shabazz, done by Mr. Brian Philpott as part of our Malcolm X Day celebration 2018. Thank you for your support. Thank you for coming out. And it's all yours. Let me take my hands off it. It's, it's gone now. And he's a local artist, so. No, he's actually in Phoenix. He'll be up here in a couple of weeks. I'm, we, we come here and eat regularly. Okay, please. I would love to meet him in person because I like to support our upcoming artists. So this is a beautiful portrait, and we will make good use of it. Well, that's the facts. Nothing but the facts. You can check that out on Lowland Films. Always, you can go to KCEP FM when you're here in Vegas. We're streaming at power88lv.com. Like it is radio, Friday mornings, 10 a.m., and the breakdown. But again, Malcolm X Day is finally completed now. Ms. Trina Joss, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, despite the fact that I tried to protect the Muslim movement, if you'll notice, they uh, use their newspaper to slander me and to labeled me as a hypocrite and uh, as a rebel, and Mr. Muhammad himself said that I defected. Well, in reality, I never even left the Muslim movement. They put me out, and they put me out because of what I knew, and what I knew was told to me by Mr. Muhammad's son, uh, Wallace Muhammad himself. They put me out, and they put him out. We look at history, we look at Malcolm, and the words, he loved us so much, really become more meaningful. If you looked at it, he couldn't be buried, nor would any church take him or mosque, or temple, for his funeral services. Can you believe that? So it was held in a small place, which is now pretty much run down because Harlem's being gentrified again, and the only thing that exists is still the facade. And the place could only hold 300 people. But on 147th Street, between 147th Street and 148th Street, to 145th Street was blocked off. I just know that because I'm a Harlemite. I just know that Malcolm, for me, meant something because I did believe in Dr. King, and although I was able to bless to go and learn more about him, Malcolm was given to me through the people who were around me. It's only really time I really see my father upset going home from work some days, talking about how he prosecuted individuals. But one of the things he did talk about is Malcolm. And although we may not have walked with him, because as my mother would tell you, she was scared that my father was going out there. 
was, my father, that's the kind of guy he was. He was blessed to have an education, an opportunity, being a Jamaican, Mark Carvey, all that kind of stuff. He knew Malcolm's way. He wasn't going to work, but he did appreciate him. By any means necessary, we shall receive what we need, regardless of whether or not the powers that be engages us in dialogue or commentary. And realistically, we've been made to be slaves, oppressed for half a millennium of days. But now is the day where every melanated man, woman, and child is now awake with the mind state of the great revolutionaries. We are the powder keg within the house of white supremacy, which will inevitably explode to decapitate the beast. The great whore that is New Babylon owes us way more than numbers can soar through infinity. Our boiling point has been exceedingly reached and I'll be damned if we have to languish in abject poverty while they dwell in comfort and peace. Not sure just how much they expect us to take, but reality is that we are on the verge of destroying our enemies on the scale of a magnitude 10 massive earthquake. This madness was forever in the master's plan. And the caucuses, Jesus is not coming to save us black people, it's time we overstand. Our ancestors were always fierce warriors until the devils descended upon our cable land with guns and now we are subjected to their every orders. And I don't know about y'all, but I've never been good at biting my tongue and bowing down. And now, to add insult to injury, we're being ruled by a damn fool clown. One who's rescinding all legislation to strip us of our civil and human rights and they've still yet to atone for their burning, lynching, and murdering our ancestors for many myriad days and nights. But karmatic justice will be tangibly real. And for all their nooses, we shall loose the faithful lightning as we open up the seventh seal. Tired of being sentenced to living a life of tragedy and atrocities. That's why I inhale the natural mystic blowing in the summer breeze, clearing my mind of the diabolical colonizer's disease. Ain't no more classical conditioning leaving us begging on our hands and knees just to live a decent life while yearning for love, justice, and peace. So I'm conditioning my mind to be brave that if I must sacrifice my life, because for the cause of liberation, I'm prepared to fight and to die tonight. Because he became dismayed, if you will, with his leaders, the person who gave him the life that he was now living, a concept. Unfortunately, a lot of my was a man like everybody else. So it was some things that existed that may have, if we look at it today, we had a man of power who was having children of sex with his employees, who was having children, who was not taking care of us. So maybe, just like the fact that even if you didn't sign your mouth, we didn't understand how hard it is to go against us. Because under those concepts now, if I don't know why the TMZ would have got it. See what they did to the I mean, they didn't stop. You know, see what the county is doing. The TMZ would have got it for those crimes. But some ladies, unfortunately, because of the man of power, felt victim or afraid of his sexual prowess. Black male, black hair, brown eyes, scar on his forehead above his right eyebrow. Last seen at Bell's Market wearing sunrise Chuka Thames and a t-shirt that read, rest in peace, Jalil and Kim. He would be the number one suspect. He would be the perfect subject for them to use as a project to show you how the law serves and protects black boys. Black boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? This presentation we're gonna have her from Dr. Leonard Jeffries, the preeminent teacher of Dr. Jeffries. He was the African Studies chairperson at the City College of New York, where Dr. Betty Shabazz also taught, Malcolm's wife. But Dr. Jeffries had classes on Wednesday, 6 to 9, which is 6 to 10.30 if you knew Dr. Jeffries. And I will tell you, you couldn't get in that class. 
Back in the old days, for the folks who may not remember, you had to get a little card, pre-registration, class is at 100, and you maybe sign in 25, Dr. Jeffrey signed in 50. But the class was filled, pre-registration, you had to fill out that little card, wait in line to get it, to fill it out, to get it back. And you say, I'm gonna go pre-register, cool, no. I'm gonna get in line and do the signing, no. I got there for 30, for a six o'clock class, black people looked at me like I was crazy. From Elijah Muhammad to Malcolm X to Farrakhan, mm -hmm. it's about 90 years of knowledge of being within a racist system, how long will the church doctrines represent a kumbaya type of uh, doctrine where we try to get along instead of doing for ourselves? How long before we, uh, as a mass group of people, begin to take on what Elijah Muhammad said, what Malcolm was saying, what uh, Farrakhan says today? Well, uh, brother, thanks for the question. I, I, I wasn't prepared to come out here in the desert and deal with such deep questions, so I got to take a breath <laughs> and deal with it. Um, the beauty of the age now that we're in is that these questions are being looked at and need to be looked at, and we need to go deep uh, into it. Um, we cannot do it effectively, I think, unless we have a systems analysis. That's what I've been teaching and preaching and, and, uh, as long as I can remember. Systems analysis allows us to relate things and compare things and then come to a synthesis. All knowledge has to be seen in terms of this. The triangle, I, I borrowed that from our ancient Africans. And people said, well, uh, Dr. J, you, you borrowed it. You're talking about thesis? You talk about the opposite, the antithesis, and then you talk about them coming together in the synthesis. And my people, some of my smart ass folks used to say, Dr. J, that sounds like the Greeks. <laughs> I said, well, it might sound like what the Greeks borrowed from the Africans, but it's not the Greeks. And then some others would say, well, that sounds like Hegel, the Germans. I say, well, it may sound like Hegel, but if you go deep, you'll find out that Hegel borrowed it from the deeper African thought. So as we process the information that you're talking about, you're talking about three individuals, um, the Honorable Elijah, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you're talking about the, uh, his partner, uh, al Haj Malik, al -Jamath, and then you talk about the synthesis, uh, Minister Farrakhan. And so in order to appreciate the dynamic of the three of them, you're going to have to study separately a database on who was the minister, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We be like, love, we gotta love ourselves. It's 2018, we cannot continue to care about think about us. And especially those who don't look like us, do you understand? We still look for validation, that has to stop. You can expect those that hurt us to help heal us and to validate us. And this is not teaching, hey, I'm a minister, this is teaching love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We got to get home first. But the home won't come together if we're not loving each other. We said, we got to come together. We got to love each other. If you struggle with you, you won't ever come with me. So let's get us together first. You know what I'm saying? It's 2018. We can't continue to hate our features. Embrace what you have. Because it's very thing that we're trying to change. They buy you. They won't. We walk around with a little silver stain because our lips are a certain size, or we may have a little more hip or a little more this or a little. The way God made you is perfect in the way you are. Embrace it. Because when you love yourself, it's going to be hard to pick up a pistol. It's going to be hard to pick up the cocaine and use the bottle of the tool to cope with a pain issue when you love yourself. We have to apologize to these youngsters here. And you all tell them that I'm not disrespecting them with a little curse or two in my presentation. It ain't me. It's the African Holy Ghost. That's going to put a little pepper in the mix. I know better. Well trained. But sometimes I just can't help it. 
So you all know about the African Holy Ghost, don't you? Hey. Hey. If it wasn't for that African Holy Ghost, y'all wouldn't be here. And because it's so powerful, the concept of spirit running through everything is so powerful that people who are not you have stolen your power and draped themselves in it. So when we say Holy Ghost, we think of what? Alongside a white, blonde, blue-eyed Jesus, we think of what? A white Holy Ghost. Surrounded by what? White angels. Fluffing and flapping their wings around. Now, we don't want to take all of that from you because we know that's your basic foundation. But look, that's part of what I call survival culture. And you got to survive in order for you to transform and change into developmental culture. So that's my mission. <clears throat> that survival culture served me well. But my family had since when I came out of the womb, January 19, 1937, as black and beautiful as I was, they had sense enough to blacken up the Bible. So when we talk about Jesus, we talk about a black African Jesus surrounded by some black angels. Only thing white in my upbringing was the devil. And that was a negative spirit running around. Messing with people's consciousness and their heart and their head, having them doing dastardly things. So we need comparing and contrasting. By whiteness, we're not talking about human beings. We're talking about concepts and ideas, values, beliefs. That devil is running around everywhere. And if you want to make him a red devil with some tails and the horns, you can do that. But I ain't never seen nothing in my life that stood up like a human being and had a tail, some horns, and was red. In my experience, and experience with my grandmother and my grandfather on both sides, and my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather and their great-great-grandfather, and the experience of, in my life, that devil was not red. The devil was white as can be. Well, Dr. J, you're not going to be racist on us tonight, are you? It's Truth. Most of the learning that you have inherited that makes you you and allows you to go to high places, most of that learning has been turned upside down and our role is to turn it upside right. People deal with myths and legends and they deal with metaphors and they got you all confused because they don't explain what myths are and legends are and what role they play, and they don't explain what metaphor is and comparisons and whatnot. You've been miseducated. Anybody out there that ain't been miseducated? Now some of y'all is embarrassed to say, Dr. J, I'm on my path. But you're on your path. You ain't got there yet. I've been on my path for 81 years. And it started in the womb with a mother who was on her path and a father who impregnated her and he was on his path. So when I popped out of the womb a beautiful black curly haired child after nine months of germination and nurturing and development inside, it was time to kick on out of there, bust on out of there and come on outside. But inside, the development was taking place. 
My mother was up from Virginia. There was farmers. And in the early 1900s, a farmer revolution was taking place around a brother who was up from Alabama, and his name was Booker T. Washington. And he had a partner, George Washington Coff. He was an institution builder, a former slave, but now an institution builder. And another former slave, George Washington Carver, who was sold for a mule, became one of the greatest scientists of his time, transforming the southern devastation of the Civil War into prosperity. Check him out, Dr. George Washington Carver. Whenever you go into a, a store and get a, a, a bar of candy, like a a, a, a peanut bar. You think African scientist George Washington Carver. He was able to come up with a hundred products out of the peanut. Synthetics and all kinds of other things. He came up with another hundred or so products out of the sweet potato. You all eating taters all the time. They ain't real taters. You go to McDonald's, they don't process something. It got you hooked on something. You don't know what the nutrients are or what's in that tater that you eat. But the sweet potato is legendary for black folks. And there's one black man who played a role as a scientist to help create an economic revolution in the South. Of course, we weren't able to profit with that because white folks are slick enough to take our genius, take our achievements, take our culture and civilization and use it for themselves. And then got you running away from it as fast as you can, looking to whiten up. Now how many of you here have been caught up in the process of whitening up? Let me see some hands. Let me hear a shout out. Hey, that's kind of quiet. We all need to, I have, we need to hear more. Now what about there in the back there? If you are white on the planet, you've been pursued by whiteness. And we can make a metaphor, which means a little comparison to make it interesting. Pursued by the white devil. White devil's in your textbook. Textbook I grew up in didn't have nothing black, except two people, Booker T. Washington and George Washington Coffin. The Greeks were the greatest of the people of ancient times. And they passed that greatness on to the Romans. And then they passed it on to the white Christianity. And then it, Judaism. And then it was passed on to white Christianity. And then later in the AD, after the death of, of Jesus the Christ, and it got into the deserts of Arabia, between Mecca and Medina, it was passed on to the white-eyed Arabs. Your history, the history of greatness of the planet, has been stolen. So my message to you is you've got to find that stolen legacy. Yeah. So Dr. J, I don't know where to look. But look, look at me, and you'll see it. I'm taking it back. Out of self. 
you're going to need a whole transformation, transfusion. We're going to have to replace that messed up brain that you got. It's so white as it's calcified. The pineal gland ain't even receptive to perceiving the great knowledge that you are a part of because you done got a calcified whiteness in the heart and the center of your mind. When you love yourself, you'll love your people. And brothers, we're gonna call women the B-I-T-C word and the H-O-E word and degrade them. We're gonna have a certain type of respect. You're gonna carry yourself a different way. I used to sell your pants. I used to wear, you know what I'm saying, the whole little nine. But when I understood what black love looks like, the pants got pulled up. The pride came out. The language changed. Nobody had to force me, give me a long speech. But I saw by example, and the example I've seen was Brother Malcolm X. Second thing, black unity. Understand, not everybody black is your friend. That's the first thing. Am I trying to be divisive? Not at all. What I'm saying is, keep your eyes open. Because the one thing the enemy did was use our own to do worse than they were doing to us. So what they did was to us, well, they can stand back, and we do the dirt, and we do the damage, and now who killing ourselves? We are. Who giving us the dirt? We are. Who doing the abusing? We are. When they say three out of five women will be molested or raped by 18, who do you think talking about doing the molesting or raping? Us. You understand? So, brothers, we got to get ourselves together. Sisters as well. But I'm up the brother, so I can speak of that. But we have to realize the unity has to start with us cleaning up our own act. I do have a savior, but I reckon that nobody's going to save us physically but us. We may be the leader. People tell me straight, you're the leader. I say, hold up, wait a minute. Let me put some pause in it. I'm not your leader. Am I, and this is for the ladies, hear this. Am I a leader? Absolutely. My mother raised the leader. But am I the leader? No. Because how did one leader got us where? Because we were not ready. But if we all get the mindset of a leader, they can knock us off one by one. We're going to keep rising up. So recognize you are the leader. Stop looking around. And then we can start doing this. I'm trying to leave. Like, and, and can't just look. They ain't making money from Malcolm X. They gave us one. We want the government to give us a holiday. Man, here's your holiday here. We have the power to do for ourselves. We don't have to wait and ask for nobody for permission. Permit yourself. Third thing, as I close, black peace. Be at peace with yourself. We are broken people. Let's just recognize it. But we have to want to heal. It's nothing wrong with talking to somebody, getting therapy. Do what you got to do. We're products of those who were abused, robbed, raped, destroyed. We in bad shape. We damaged goods. But we also got in the rubs. We also got something good that they know they want. That's why they still attack us like that. So we have to be a piece of ourselves so we can heal ourselves, heal our minds. And if we do those three things, I guarantee, not only we uphold Malcolm X's name, we will uphold our community. And we're going to say, never again. Never again. Because the Jews say, never again. That's what they say. So let's recognize who we are. I don't care if you want to be called black, Hebrew, Israelite, Church of God of Christ, this Christ, that God, Baptist, we all the same. Because when we work on who we pray to, we are the prayer. So the time to come together is now. So let's not honor Brother Malcolm on today and tomorrow and go back doing the same things. We walk through this building, including myself, with a different mindset, let's be transformed. Renew your mindset. As a man thinks of so is he. Believe you are somebody. Black is beautiful, not just a statement, it's a lifestyle. God bless you all, powerful people. This is Like It Is Radio, Black Intelligent Talk Radio.